What's going on everybody, Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, we're going to be doing a quick comparison between the Blue F92 E 5G and the Blue F91 5G. Now, the Blue F91 5G came out about a year ago, and just going off the names, I'm assuming the F92 E 5G is technically a successor, but based on what I've seen from this phone so far, it seems like it's more of a light version, but we'll see. But regardless, we're going to be going over the similarities and differences between these two phones to help you decide which one is a better choice for you. Now, as always, if you do end up wanting to learn more about either phone individually, definitely check out the description, where we'll be linking to several for other videos about them, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So with the Blue F92e 5G, we're getting a 6.5 inch IPS LCD display with a 720p resolution, a PPI of 270, and a 20x9 aspect ratio. With the Blue F91 5G, we're getting a 6.8 inch LCD display with a 1080p resolution, a PPI of 396, and a 20.5x9 aspect ratio. So on one hand, the Blue F92 E 5G, for what it is, does have a pretty good display. Despite only having a 720p resolution, the image does look decently sharp, so if you're watching maybe the occasional video every now and then, I do think you still are going to get a decent experience. The colors also look pretty nice, so again, definitely not bad here. But that being said, in pretty much every way, the display on the Blue F91 5G is better. First of all, at 6.8 inches, versus again, 6.5 with the F92 E 5G. The F91 5G is a bit larger and also has a slightly taller and more narrow form factor at 20 and a half by 9 versus again 20 by 9. So if you're going to be on your phone a bit more, whether you're watching videos in landscape mode or maybe scrolling through social media or something like that, regardless, even just because of the size and dimensions alone, you are most likely going to get a better experience with the F91 5G. But then in addition to this, the F91 5G does have a 1080p resolution versus again only 720p with the F92 E 5G. And even though it doesn't look bad at all, the F91 5G does have a much sharper image. So in general, if you're going to be on your phone a bit more, especially consuming a lot of content, I do think you will be better off with the F91 5G. Now for storage, both phones do have 128 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion. So definitely a great amount of storage here, no matter which phone you get, whether you're more of a light user and you don't really put a ton of stuff on your phone, or you're more of a heavy user and you're constantly downloading apps, games, stuff like that. No matter what the case may be for the money with either phone, you're definitely getting a great amount of storage here. So if that is more of an important factor for you, then either phone will be a great choice. For security features, both phones do have face unlock and they both have fingerprint scanners right here in the power keys. So definitely a great spot for a fingerprint scanner. But starting with the F92 E 5G, let's give them a try. There we go, one more time. And there we go. And now for the F91 5G. There we go, one more time. And there we go. So as you can see, both fingerprint scanners were real fast and responsive. And again, remember, both phones do have face unlock too. So if you want to use that instead, you always can. Now, taking a look at the camera setups here, with the Blue F92 E 5G, we got a water drop notch for the front facing camera. This camera is 13 megapixels. Then on the back, we got a triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 2 megapixel macro camera, and a 0.3 megapixel depth sensing camera. Now, keep in mind, I do want to point out, on Blue's website, the F92e apparently supposedly has an ultra wide camera, but I have looked at pretty much every feature on this camera and I don't see it. There's no 0.6x or anything like that. So I'm assuming they just mean the main camera frame is a little bit wider, but it is kind of weird that they mention it having an ultra wide camera. But just keep in mind, as you can see, there's no 0.6x or no button like that. So unless they mean the frame is just wider in and of itself, I'm just going to assume there's no actual ultra wide camera. Now with the blue F91 5G, we got a nice looking hole punch design for the front facing camera. This camera is 16 megapixels. Then on the back, we got a quad camera setup with a 48 megapixel main camera, a 5 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera, and a 2 megapixel macro camera. So in general, when it comes to camera features, as you can see with the blue F91 5G, we actually do get a normal ultra wide camera. So definitely cool there. But again, with the F92 E 5G, I'm not really sure what's up with the whole ultra wide camera situation. I guess maybe now that I look at it side by side, the regular frame of the blue F92 E 5G is a little bit wider. So that could be what they're talking about. But if you're expecting something like a 0.5 or 0.6 X, then with the F92 E 5G, you are going to be disappointed because it doesn't have that. Whereas with the F91 5G, again, it does have a regular ultra wide camera. And as you can see, even if the angle with the F92 E 5G is a little bit wider normally, with an actual ultra wide camera, the F91 5G can get quite a bit wider. 
So in general, if you really do care about the ultra wide camera feature, then definitely keep this in mind. But aside from that, there's really not a huge difference for what they are. Both phones do have really good camera setups and they also take really good photos. To give you an idea of what they can do, here's some pictures taken with the blue F92 E 5G. And for the average user, no matter what you're doing with your camera, I do think the quality is going to be plenty good enough. And this really just goes to show that if you want to take nice pictures, you really don't need to spend a thousand dollars on a super high end flagship phone because a phone like this is going to get the job done just fine. Now here's some pictures taken with the blue F91 5G. And again, same thing, definitely great quality. In between the two, I feel like there's not a huge difference. So in general, if you don't really care about the ultra wide camera, but you want good photo quality in general, then I really don't think you're going to go wrong with either phone here. Another thing I do want to point out here is that for video, both phones have a max recording quality of 2K in the rear cameras and 1080p in the front. And while 2K isn't really a game changer per se, if you do like to record videos and you want to record in a slightly higher quality than 1080p, then keep in mind, both phones can do this. And compared to other phones in the same price range, this is at least a little bit of an advantage. Now, when it comes to RAM and processor, with the blue F92 E 5G, we're getting four gigabytes of RAM with the MediaTek Dimensity 700 processor. With the blue F91 5G, this phone is getting eight gigabytes of RAM with the MediaTek Dimensity 810 processor. Now, this is part of the reason why I feel like the blue F92 E 5G is kind of the light version of the F91 5G, even though it is a bit newer. It's like comparing the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE to the regular Samsung Galaxy S21. Yeah, sure, the S21 FE is newer, but the regular S21 is still technically higher end. Now, obviously, compared to these, those two phones are in a completely different price range, but the general principle still applies. In my experience between the two, the blue F91 5G is actually a little bit faster. Now, keep in mind, the difference is definitely definitely not huge. And in fact, when it comes to the overall capabilities here, these phones are pretty much at the same level. I mean, if you're doing more basic activities like web browsing, social media, streaming videos every now and then, and then maybe some light mobile gaming too, for that kind of activity, either phone is going to be perfectly fine. And for what they are, I do think the performance we're getting here is pretty good. That being said though, in general, I would say the blue F91 5G is a tiny bit faster. So if you're going to be on your phone a bit more with this phone, you might get a slightly smoother experience. Now, that being said, I did run benchmark tests on these phones using Geekbench 5. And here are the results I got. So again, really not a huge difference, but technically between the two, I would say again, the blue F91 5G is a tiny bit faster, but in general, no matter which phone you get, you are gonna get a pretty similar experience no matter why. Now for the batteries, both phones do have 5,000 milliamp hour batteries with the F92 E 5G supporting 10 watt fast charging and the F91 5G supporting 18. In addition to this, keep in mind, the F91 5G does also have wireless charging, which is definitely not a feature you find every day in this price range. So in general, the charging features are really the only difference between these two phones when it comes to the battery. So if you want wireless charging to get a little bit more flexible, flexibility. And then maybe you want slightly better charging speed because keep in mind the difference between 10 and 18 watt fast charging while still definitely being noticeable is definitely not going to be anywhere near the difference between something like 18 and 33. But still in general, if you do want better charging, the blue F91 5G will have an advantage. Aside from that though, again, at 5,000 milliamp hours in the US at least, this is pretty much the largest battery you can get in a smartphone. So if battery life and longevity is important to you, then either phone is definitely going to be a great choice. Now, when it comes to the software, this is like the one area where the blue F92 E 5G actually has an advantage. With this phone, we are getting Android 12, whereas unfortunately with the blue F91 5G, this phone only has Android 11 and I did update it today. So no, it doesn't have Android 12 at this point. And honestly, since it's been out for over a year, I seriously doubt it's going to get it. That's really one drawback with blue. I haven't actually seen any major updates with any of their phones. So if you really do care about software support, then you're probably not going to want a blue phone in general. But if you do want a slightly newer software between the two, then the F92 E 5G will have an advantage and Honestly, at this point in 2023, not very many phones in this price range have Android 13 anyway. So with this phone, having Android 12 really isn't that bad. Another thing I do want to point out here is that with the blue F92 E 5G, this phone unfortunately does not have NFC, which was definitely disappointing because at this point in 2023, contactless mobile payment services, which you do need NFC to use, are getting so popular and widely used. I mean, pretty much every store I've been to this year has some sort of tap and pay. So I feel like every smartphone should have NFC at this point. But unfortunately, again, this phone does not have NFC. So if you do like to use tap and pay, you are going to want to go with something else. That being said though, the blue F91 5G does have NFC. So between the two, of course, if you do like to use tap and pay, you are going to want to go with this phone instead. And I think it's kind of weird that the older phone does have NFC, whereas the newer one doesn't. It just doesn't make sense to me, especially considering, I mean, the blue F92 E 5G is obviously a 5G phone and you would think that 5G phones would have slightly better features, but unfortunately it is what it is. So again, if you do like to use tap and pay, then definitely just keep this in mind. But in conclusion, 
which of these phones is better? In general, as much as I want to say the blue F92 E 5G is better, seeing that it is the newer phone, unless you really care about the software, in which case, again, you're probably going to want Android 13 and not Android 12 anyway. But aside from that one advantage, in every other way, I would say the blue F91 5G is still the better device here. It has a better display that's not only a bit larger with better dimensions, but also has a 1080p resolution versus, again, only 720p. So if you're going to be consuming a lot of content, then this is definitely going to make a difference. It also has a slightly better camera setup with a regular ultra wide camera, whereas with the blue F92 E 5G, I can't find the ultra wide camera on this phone. I'm assuming it just doesn't have that same kind of feature. I mean, let me know in the comments if you have this phone and you found out how to use the ultra wide camera. I just couldn't find it. I might be missing it, but I seriously doubt it. But in general, again, between the two, if you do want a regular ultra wide camera, again, the F91 5G will have an advantage. It also does have wireless charging and just faster charging in general. And it does have NFC, whereas the F92 E 5G doesn't. And this is definitely a big advantage nowadays. Again, the only real advantage the blue F92 E 5G has is that it does have a slightly newer software, but even then it's still not the newest version of Android. So if the software is really that important to you, then you're probably gonna wanna get something like a Samsung, for example, that's gonna have Android 13. So in general, we'll both phones are definitely good options if you're looking for an affordable 5G phone. If you really want to maximize the features and overall value that you're going to get for the money, I do think the blue F91 5G is still going to be the best choice here. Now, once again, if you do want to learn more about either phone individually, definitely check out the description where we'll be linking to several other videos about them, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipa's Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.